Hi, hello, welcome again. And so today we will be yes, may nating tapusin na ang discussion ng obligation and contract. And so wag na nating patagalin. Let's start with an enforceable contracts. So na discuss na rin naman natin, but then let me repeat. Ano ba ang an enforceable contracts? Yes. Unenforceable contracts refers to ito yung mga contracts kung saan hindi pwedeng i-enforced in court by reason of defects, okay? Until and unless they are ratified according to the law. So, unenforceable siya. Yung status niya, unenforceable muna. Mas defective siya kay voidable kasi si voidable, valid siya, pwede siyang ma-enforced, yun nga lang, pwede siyang ma-annulled, pwede siyang makawalang visa. Now, etong si unenforceable contracts, yung status niya is hindi talaga siya pwedeng i-enforced. Kailangan muna ma-ratified siya first para ma-enforced in Court. Okay? So, prior dun sa ratification, bago siya ma-ratified, then it has no effect yet. Wala pa siyang legal effects. But, yun nga, they may be ratified. Hence, they can have, in such a case, the effect of a valid contract once ratified. Pag na-ratified na siya, dun siya magkakaroon ng effect like as if a valid contract. Contrary nga dun kay voidable and kay resistible contracts, doon, meron ng legal effects. Until, uh, only that, pwede siyang ma-annulled, mawawalan ng visa, mawawalan ng legal effects, or kung receivable contracts naman, pwede siyang ma-resend. So, well, that's it. Um, meron tayong kinds of unenforceable contracts, but then we will be discussing this as we go on with our discussion. First is yung unauthorized contracts. Second, those that fail to comply with the statute of frauds. And third, I, yung where both parties are incapable of giving consent to a contract. Now, Article 14.03 enumerates the contracts which are unenforceable. So, siguro, I don't want to read this as one. Uh, basahin natin siya paragraph per paragraph na rin. And let's discuss right after. Okay, so first, number one sa enumeration ni 1403, di ba? The following contracts are unenforceable unless they are ratified. So number one, those entered into in the name of another person by one who has been given no authority or legal representation or who has acted beyond his power. So, ito yung mga unauthorized contracts. Sila ay unenforceable. Kailangan muna i-ratified nung person, nung principal, para magkaroon ng legal effects. Actually, na-discuss na natin to before, previously. Pero, uh, yun nga, sabi ko nga, madi-discuss din natin siya as we reach this discussion ng unenforceable contracts. Yung binenta ng wala namang authority, binenta mo yung property ng iba in their name, tapos wala ka namang authority to sell that or to dispose. Example, ha? Uh, if walang, without uh, authority from Pogi, Binenta ni Ganda ang sasakyan ni Pogi in the name of Pogi to Beauty. So, the contract is unauthorized. Okay? Unauthorized contract talaga siya. And, hence, wala siyang legal effects unless niratify ni Pogi ang um, pagibenta ni Ganda. Papaano? Either, yun nga, express or implied. Pwede naman. Express pag through words talaga, verbal or written, and then implied if through the conduct. Like, yung sa example natin before is, if ever, uh, nung nalaman ni Pogi, nagulekta naman siya kay Beauty ng bayad. So, although hindi niya inauthorized si Ganda to sell his property, pero kinulekta niya kay Beauty yung bayad. So, it's 
like ni-ratify niya yung contract and so nagkaroon na siya ng legal effects. Although at first, an enforceable contract pa siya kasi nga unauthorized. Yun yung number one enumeration ng unenforceable contracts. Now, take note also na yung unauthorized contracts, hindi lang naman na kailangan wala talagang authority. Pwede rin binigyan ka ng authority, but you acted beyond that power. So, if example, yung authority mo is to mortgage that property, pero ang ginawa mo, binenta mo, then iba na siya, di ba? You acted beyond the power na binigay sa iyo ng principal. Anyway, so that that's it. Ito yung number one enumeration. Yung second paragraph talks about the statute of fraud. Ito rin yung pangalawang, pangalawa sa enumeration ng kinds of unenforceable contracts, di ba? Yun daw mga contracts na hindi nag-comply with the statute of frauds. Si statute of frauds na require niya na yung contract dapat in writing, kumbaga, naka-in writing siya. Yung purpose is, aside from the fact na to prevent fraud is para rin at least to guard against mistakes. Yun daw yung purpose. Actually, hindi naman na-require ni statute of frauds na dapat, uh, hindi siya nag-require ng formal written document talaga. Ang enumeration na to is importante lang naka-in writing. So, pwede siya kahit sa ang papel. Nakasulat kamay, naka-typewritten, naka-formal talaga na notarized ba dyan, naka-pencil, ball pen, anything as long as um, it records the intent of the parties. Yun na siya. So, nag-enumerate siya si Article 1403, second paragraph ng mga cases or scenarios, instances na kailangan naka-in-writing para maging enforceable. Otherwise, unenforceable siya. Unenforceable, kailangan ma-ratify muna para maging enforceable. Okay? Just to repeat, the statute of frauds is a law which requires that a certain contract must be in writing, otherwise unenforceable. So, ano yung purpose? To prevent fraud. And also, since uh, memory is many times unreliable, and so, to, ano nga rin daw, prevent mistake. Okay? Oral agreement may sometimes result daw in injustice. injustice. So, to aid human memory, to prevent the commission of injustice due to, due to the faulty memory, to discourage intentional misrepresentations. So, yun yung mga principal aims or purpose ng statute of frauds. Now, Simula na siguro natin yung enumeration kasi yun, na-summarize ko na rin at na-repeat ko na rin ulit. Ulit, and so, bago nga pala, uh, I just want to emphasize that statute of frauds is applicable only to executory contracts. And so, hindi na siya applicable pag yung contract is totally or partially executed na. So, doon lang siya mag-a-apply sa mga contracts na wala pa executory or wala pa talagang performance, okay? Pag once na simulan na partially, then hindi na kailangan si statute or hindi na mag-a-apply si statute of frauds. So, ano nga ba? Ano-ano yung mga contracts na ni-required under statute of frauds to be in writing? Number one, an agreement by its terms is not to be performed within a year from the making thereof. Okay? So, yung mga agreement na hindi mo ipe-perform within one year, ngayon natin ginawa, pero uh, within one year, hindi pa natin ipe-perform. So, kumbaga, napaka-future niya. So, yung mga agreements na ipe-perform na within a year from the time na ginawa natin yung agreements ay hindi covered ng statute of frauds. Okay? So, example, December 1, 2020, Pogi sold to Ganda verbally a specific, uh, say, phone for 10,000 pesos. 
the parties agree that the delivery and payment shall be on December 25, 2021. Okay? So, since yung performance shall take place after na ng one year from the execution of the contract, then dapat it must be in writing to be enforceable. Okay? Yun yung ibig sabihin ng number one. Now, let's proceed with number two. A special promise to answer for the debt, default, or miscarriage of another. Okay, so promise to answer para sa mga utang or ng iba, di ba? Obligation ng ibang tao. Anyway, example, if si Pogi may utang siya kay Ganda na 10,000 pesos, tapos yung guarantor ay si Beauty. Now, the contract is entered into uh, verbally ulit. So, if Pogi hindi niya nabayaran ang utang niya kay Ganda, pagdating ng due date, si Ganda, he can, she cannot compel Beauty to pay because the contract is unenforceable. Bakit? Kasi it was not reduced in writing. Diba? Beauty is actually promising to answer for the debt of Pogi pag hindi nabayaran ni Pogi. So, such a fraud requires that it must be in writing. Otherwise, it is unenforceable. So, yun nga, kasi verbally lang naman yung ginawa ni Pogi, Beauty, and Ganda. And so, unenforceable. Yun, yun yung ibig sabihin ng second paragraph, ay second enumeration. Now, yung third enumeration sabi, an agreement made in consideration of marriage other than a mutual promise to marry. So, eto, example, ganito. Pogi promised Ganda to give her a specific car if Ganda will marry Makisig by next month. Okay? Now, the contract was made verbally ulit. Now, five days after, etong si Ganda, pinakasalan na kaagad si Makisig. So, question, can Ganda demand delivery of the car na pinramis ni Pogi? The answer is no. Why? Because if the agreement is in consideration of marriage, yun yung enumeration ni third sa statute of frauds, dapat daw it must be in writing. Otherwise, unenforceable. E, alam na alam nyo na anong ibig sabihin ng unenforceable. Okay? Well, pero meron siyang exception kasi sabi other than a mutual promise to marry. So, if it is a mutual promise to marry between the parties, then the contract is enforceable even if ano lang, verbally lang nila ginawa. Okay? Take note, however, that if one party does not comply with his obligation to marry the other, the injured party cannot compel the other to proceed with a marriage proposition. Kasi yung right lang naman talaga niya is to ask for damages because of breach of promise. Kasi hindi mo naman talaga mapipilit ang isang tao to marry you. Okay? Kahit pa nag-promise siya, napakasalan ka, okay, and so you go with the preparation and lahat-lahat and last minute, nag-back out siya. Okay? Hindi ka pwede mag-file ng case para to specific, uh, case for specific performance na pakasalan ka. The only thing that you can do is to ask for damages. Kasi gumawa ka na, nag-prepare na lahat-lahat, and then last minute, tsaka pa siya umatras. Pero kung wala rin, wala pang mga preparation, wala pang damages, din malamang hindi ka rin makakapag- uh, makakahingi ng bayad for damages. Anyway, that is just a, ano ba yan? Mm, given ad additional knowledge of law, pero hindi naman siya covered sa discussion natin ng obligation and contracts. Okay? Now, let's proceed with the fourth paragraph. Okay. Actually, it just refers to an agreement for the sale of goods chattels or things in action at a price of 500 pesos daw or more. Kailangan, it must also be reduced in writing. Okay? So, example, if si Pogi and Ganda entered 
verbally or orally into a contract of sale of, say, a particular notebook where mamahalin ang notebook na to, uh, it cost 600 pesos. So, delivery and payment are to take place on, say, December 25, 2021. If on the date stated, Pogi refused to deliver, Ganda cannot compel him to deliver because uh, kahit pa willing siya to pay because the contract falls under the statute of frauds, di ba? To be enforceable, it must be in writing, eto verbally, 600 pesos yung price ng notebook. So, dapat naka in writing na sana yun para ma-enforced or ma-compel ni Ganda si Pogi to deliver that notebook. Okay? Now, let's proceed with this number five. An agreement for the leasing of a longer period than one year of the sale of real property or an interest therein. So, meron siyang instances na na-covered. First, if yung lease daw is one year or less, pwede siyang oral contract, okay? Enforceable na ang oral contract. If the object is real or personal property, okay? Leasing of personal or real property and then hindi naman nag-exceed ng one year, okay? One year or less pala. So, yun. Pwede nang hindi in writing. Enforceable pa rin siya. Now, if yung lease is more than one year and the object is immovable, it must be in writing. Otherwise, unenforceable. Okay? Yun yung ibig sabihin ng fifth uh, ano, enumeration. Okay, again ha, una, if yung lease is one year or less, tapos yung kahit pa yung object is real property or personal property, enforceable siya. Basta less than one year yung uh, period ng lease. Okay? Tapos, if the second scenario is if more than one year na yung lease period, then yung object is immovable, then dapat it must be in writing. Otherwise, unenforceable. And another scenario na nandito sa enumeration is if daw yung sale ng immovable property or immovable meaning real property, then, irrespective of the price of the sale, kahit pa magkano, basta real property ang binibenta. It must be in writing. Otherwise, unenforceable. Okay? So, number six ng enumeration is a representation as to the credit of a third person. Kailangan din naka in writing according kay statute of frauds so example if si Pogi gusto niyang manghiram ng 100,000 pesos from banko ABC now bago pa yung banko nag-release ng pera the bank inquired from say Ganda about the credit status of Pogi eto si Ganda verbally Inassure niya yung banko that uh, Pogi's credit status is good. Sabi niya, it is a well-known client of the other banks in the locality and could easily pay his loan if given. Yun yung sabi ni Ganda. Okay daw yung credit status. Now, by virtue of such statement, etong si Banko ABC released the money. Now, question. If on the due date, Si Pogi hindi makapagbayad sa kay Banko ABC. Can the bank hold Ganda liable? The answer is no. Because sabi nga ni Article 1403, second paragraph, number 6, study yung representation as to the credit of the other person must be in writing. Otherwise, unenforceable if. Yung sinabi lang naman ni Ganda is, di ba, yung statement niya which assured Banko ABC is orally known or verbally made, di ba? So, wala. Unenforceable yon Okay, so balikan natin si Article 1403. Tapos na natin yung first paragraph, second paragraph with these six enumerations. So, nandito na tayo kay number three paragraph. 
which is another enumeration ng unenforceable contracts. Eto is pag daw, both parties are incapable of giving consent to a contract. So, pag yung isang parties lang, yung incapable of giving consent, that is voidable. Okay? Naaalala nyo pa sa ating discussion ng voidable contracts, pag one party is incapacitated to give consent, voidable. Pero, pag ang scenario is both parties are incapable, incapacitated to give consent, then the contract is unenforceable. Okay? So, that's Article 1403. Tapos na tayo sa pinakamahalagang provision ng uh, unenforceable contracts. Then, ito. Let's proceed with Article 1404. Unauthorized contracts are governed by Article 1317 and the principles of agency in Title 10 of this book. Actually, na-discuss na natin to when we discuss Article 1317 before. So, if you want to, ano, gusto nyo manood ng lectures ko dito, pakibalikan na lang yung video na yun. Okay? Sabi lang naman ni Article 1404, uh, unauthorized contracts is governed by yun, Article 1317. So, yun na lang yung balikan nyo. Now, let's proceed with Article 1405. Sabi ko kanina, unenforceable contracts, uh, wala siyang legal effects unless dapat maratified muna kasi pag naratify siya, magkakaroon na siya ng legal effects. Now, paano siya mararatify? Sabi ni Article 1405, nagbigay siya ng dalawang pamamaraan, two ways of ratification of contracts infringing the statute of frauds. Okay? So first, Yung failure to object to the presentation of oral evidence. Then second, acceptance of benefits under them. So, etong sa failure to object, kasi diba, pag nag-file ka ng case sa court, and then, yung pinresent nilang evidence is yung oral evidence. Dapat, mag-object ka. Na kung hindi ka nag-object, it's as if you, de uh, you waive your right. Okay? So, yun. Dahil magkaroon ng waiver, then that is considered as ratification of contracts na nag infringe ng statute of frauds. And yung second nga is yung acceptance of, of benefits. So, the statute does not apply to executed or partially executed or performed contracts. Diba? Pabalik-balik, sinabi ko na. It is only applicable to executory contracts. Meaning, yung mga wala pang performance talaga. So, if tinanggap mo na, partially, may tinanggap ka ng partial performance or payment or benefits, then it's as if there is already a ratification of the contracts which infringe statute of frauds. Okay? So, yun. Yun lang naman yung ibig sabihin ni 1405. Madali lang siya. Now, let's proceed with Article 1406. When a contract is enforceable under the statute of frauds and a public document is necessary for its registration in the registry of deeds, the parties may avail themselves of the right under 1357. Actually, ito yung, oh, kung naalala nyo pa, yung right of one party to compel the other to execute the needed instrument. Ang dalawang kailangan lang naman dun, pabalik-balik ko din sinabi, kailangan lang at least valid at saka enforceable yung contract. So, yung public document is necessary lang for convenience. Kaya yung remedy ng party is to compel the other party to execute the necessary instrument, okay? Now, eto din yung ibig sabihin ng 1406. Pag daw yung contract is enforceable under the statute of frauds at kailangan ng public document para ma-register siya sa registry of deeds, then pwedeng i-compel ng one party yung the other party to compel the other, di ba? To execute the needed instrument. Yun yung ibig sabihin niya. And so, I don't think kailangan pa natin siyang i-discuss ng matagal. Balikan yun na lang din yung discussion ng Article 1357 if gusto niyo pa siyang i-dig in. Gusto niyo pang intindihan ng, intindihin ng mas maayos. Okay? Now, Article 1407. 
Okay, ito yung contract kung saan both parties are incapable of giving consent. Di ba sabi ko nga, pag isa lang yung incapacitated to give consent, yung status niya is voidable. Pag yung dalawa mismo yung incapable of giving consent, yung status ng contract is unenforceable. So, if unenforceable yung contract, tapos one party, dahil na-discuss din natin siya sa voidable contracts, na pwede naman si guardian mag ratify ng contract na inentered into ng minor or ng incapacitated person, then, if ever nangyari is ganun nga, dalawang contract, eh, ay dalawang parties in a contract are incapacitated to enter into a contract contract or incapacitated to give, incapable of giving consent. Now, pag yung isa sa kanila, may isang parents or guardian na nag-ratify ng contract na yun, magiging voidable ang status niya. Okay? Meaning, valid until annulled. Tapos, if yung both guardian or parents talaga ang nag-ratify, yung contract will be validated from the time of inception talaga. Okay? Kasi nga, di ba, ratification cleanses the contract from any or all of its defects from the time it is constituted. Yun yung sinabi natin kanina. Sana na alala nyo pa. So, that's it. That's Article 1407. Kailangan pa ba ng example? Anyway, eto. Halimbawa, si Pogi and si Ganda. Pareho silang minor. Yung isa, wow, 16 years old. Yung isa, 17 years old. So, minor pa rin. Tapos, nag-enter sila into a contract. So, yung contract is unenforceable because silang dalawa mismo ay incapacitated to give consent. Now, if yung parent ni Poggy ratifies expressly or impliedly yung contract na inentered into ni Poggy and ni Ganda, then it becomes voidable, valid unless annulled by the guardian or parent of Ganda. Okay? Kasi ni-ratify na ng parents ni Poggy. However, if yung parents din ni Ganda also uh, ratifies the contract, then yung unenforceable contract since ni-ratify na ng both parents ni Poggy and ni Ganda, then it become validated from the time it was first entered into. Magkakaroon ng retroactive effect. So, kung December 1, 2020 sila nag-enter into contract, then from that time mismo, naging valid yung kontrata nila. So, let's proceed with Article 1408. Unenforceable contracts cannot be assailed by third persons. Yan, simple as yung strangers cannot assail or cannot question the unenforceable contracts, okay? Hindi siya pwedeng ma-attack ng strangers or yung mga hindi parties sa contract. It's 4 o'clock. Well, that's it. That's Article 1408 and that's unenforceable contracts. Now, since yeah, mayroon pa tayong time, Let's proceed with void or inexistent contracts na rin kaagad. 